What do you think of this idea that dogs can mimic each other, can sort of take on almost human characteristics in the ways they behave? Um, I, I think a lot of it is what we interpret as human characteristics in the way that they behave, but it's certainly clear to me as a dog owner that they can absolutely pick up on what a person is feeling. They, they can certainly understand what I'm feeling, what my children are feeling, um, and he, he picks up very, very well on the emotions around him. Can, give, give us an example of that. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think... Uh, a couple of years ago, I was recovering from a, an operation. Normally, Daniel would be pestering me uh, to go for a long walk. He loves his exercise. He loves long walks. Um, I was very unwell for a day or two, um, and he simply just sat beside me, wouldn't let me out of his sight, and waited till I'd recovered, and he didn't bother me for walks or food or anything. He just knew that I was under the weather. Indeed. And Dr Bradshaw, we're talking about, I think the word is empathy here, aren't we? How much can dogs show empathy with, with humans and with other animals, do you think? Well, I think we believe that dogs can show empathy because that's what we do to, to one another. I mean, it's a very important part of everyday human conversation to match somebody else's mood and feelings and so on as much as you possibly can. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think dogs, science doesn't think that dogs' brains work quite like that uh, and that basically what they're really, really good at doing is is reading other other people's or other dogs' body language. Uh, and they do this so well that they actually convince us that they can uh, read our minds. But, in fact, what they're doing is, is reading our body language. Well, uh, here's a sort of thought. It's often said that if someone is sick, uh, or even perhaps, very sadly, if they are dead, uh, the pet, the family pet, particularly a dog, will not leave them. That, that shows a degree of, if you like, empathy or sympathy with that person, doesn't it, from the animal's point of view? I think it shows a great deal of sensitivity um, and uh, also the, the very strong bond that dogs have with people. It's, it's unique among the animal kingdom. There is no other animal from you know, the, 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 the chimpanzee to any, almost anything else you can name which will form these very strong attachments to people. And it's why dogs are so easy to train and why they've been such good companions to us. So um, they, they do read our body language. And when that body language goes wrong, as far as they're concerned, um, they, get very, they get very upset um, and will stick around uh, and provide a lot of comfort. Even if they don't quite realise what they're doing, they, they are very effective at it. But so you don't go along with these Italian researchers, then, who seem to have found quite a strong link between the way dogs behave with each other. I, the, there's another interpretation of that behaviour which has been in the scientific literature for oh, over 40 years now, so I'm not quite sure why it's being reinterpreted now. Um, those things that they looked at, the play bow and the, the play face, will be, you know, every dog owner who takes their dog to the park will be familiar with those. Um, they are bits of behaviour that's built into the dog by instinct. Um, our hunter-gatherer ancestors would have seen the dogs performing exactly the same bits of behaviour uh, 10,000 years ago. Um, and so they, the dogs aren't aren't mimicking one another they're just simply saying I'm playing are you playing I'm playing are you playing and they say that to and fro to make keep the game going um, they're not actually copying anything they're doing something that just comes very naturally to them